Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. If you like my videos, please subscribe, share, and hit the thumbs up. And also check out my Patreon, which I've linked below and at the end of this video. Though I will not be putting this video on Patreon because it's my birthday and this is my special birthday video. And I am actually asking that as a birthday gift to me, you donate to the International Rescue Committee, which is an NGO that was started by Albert Einstein to give emergency aid and long-term assistance to refugees who have been displaced by war, persecution, or natural disaster. It is a very important cause to me and it would mean a lot if you donated. And if you do, let me know in the comments and I will give you a shout out in my next video. So fun fact about me, I love hot dogs. They're kind of one of my favorite comfort foods. It's sort of a running joke with my friends. I love movie theater hot dogs, Dodger dogs, Costco and Ikea hot dogs. They do not have to be like quality hot dogs. I think they're all great. So I'm sure this sounds super random and I'm sure you're wondering what on earth hot dogs could possibly have to do with Carl Lemley or Universal. Well, when I'm researching for my videos, a lot of times I'll look at old newspapers because I get some good information from them. Sometimes I get some good historical context and every now and again, I get kind of lucky and I stumble upon something that I would never expect. So imagine my surprise when I saw this headline. Turns out, in 1938, after leaving Universal, Carl Lemley bought the Western Hemisphere rights to a self-heating hot dog. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how it worked, how it came about, and how this act is actually much less random than it sounds and served a greater purpose than I would have imagined from the headline alone. So I tried looking for a patent for the self-heating hot dog, but I couldn't find one, so for how it works, I can only go off of what was in the papers. Basically, the hot dog was in water in a can with a pink label, though I don't know what that looked like. And the can essentially had a false bottom that was filled with chemicals, which sounds super healthy. And actually, despite all the chemicals, the can only cost 10% more to produce than a regular can, which I, know, I thought it was kind of interesting. The user would poke holes in the bottom of the can where the chemicals were and the air would mix causing a chemical reaction enough to cook the hot dog. Carl Emily had the rights to other self-heating foods as well including Brussels sprouts and lobster thermidor, a bunch of finger foods but hot dogs seemed to be what they really promoted. When he premiered the product, Carl Lemley had a huge event at his house in Benedict Canyon. He says that he expects to sell 25 million cans in a year. In one interview, Carl Jr. actually interjects saying, no, you must mean 250 million cans, 300 million cans. In another interview, Carl says that he expects to make $5 million off this invention easy. Now, I'm sure that this is them just trying to create hype and buzz around the product, but I don't think that they're wrong when they say that there could be a big market at their poker parties or just interest across America. It does sound super convenient. So here's where the story gets really interesting and what made me more excited about this business deal. So obviously at first when I read that Carl invested in a hot dog business, there was a part of me that was like, what the heck? Was Carl going a little crazy? What got him to this place? But in reading about it further, I found out that the inventor of the product, Leo Katz, was actually a German refugee. Carl says that he met him in Zurich, heard about the invention, and had to make the deal. But knowing Carl and reading between the lines, it's likely that he realized the invention was a surefire way to help Leo out. So he literally bought the rights and then brought Leo to the United States this way. In one paper, Carl actually says that getting Leo into the United States was really easy, but that the trouble came in trying to get the self-heating cans in. I wish I could find more information about Leo Katz, or if he had a family, or what became of him, or even more information about the self-heating cans, but in my research, I just kept hitting dead end after dead end. But it was such a wild ride to go from this wacky invention that my uncle invested in to stumbling upon an actual life that he saved. If anybody has more information about Leo Katz or the self-heating cans, I would love to hear in the comments. And also, please don't forget, as a birthday present to me and in honor of Uncle Carl, to donate to the International Rescue Committee if you can. 
It really would mean a lot to me and I will shout you out in my next video if you let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. Bye.